I welcome our Associate Provost, Dr. Don Bratch Prince. I realize to a certain extent I'm a formality, but I'm really pleased to be here. I'm a Spanish professor at Iowa State, and I've been here since, 19, since 1990, so this is an important celebration. Um, I want to thank Lucia for inviting me to share a very few brief remarks. I, to, I think you told me very, very brief, um, even before you got behind. Uh, but this is a wonderful 25th anniversary celebration. I've been at uh, Iowa State, as I said, long enough to remember the early conversations about the creation of this program. And in fact, I was one of the members of the search committee that hired Dr. Avalos um, in 1994 to lead the program. So I feel a really strong connection with it. Uh, in some respects, hiring Dr. Avalos, standing up the program was an experiment. Um, you know, we thought, would students really be interested in sufficient numbers in these courses on Latino studies? Would we be able to find enough faculty interested in coming to Iowa to develop and teach in a cross-disciplinary curriculum? And as we already heard, cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary programs are difficult to, to staff, to fund. Um, so it was an experiment, and we could not have imagined back then that today, 25 years later, the program would be what it is continuing to grow and to thrive and to connect faculty and staff and students and our communities um, to challenge and to push us to think differently about what it means to be Latino and to live as a Latino in the United States with all of the historical, political, linguistic, social, et cetera, complexities that you've been discussing here today. And I've really been impressed with and in awe of all of the presentations that I've been presented, uh, present for. I'd like to call out something that uh, Diana said, the fact that the land grant tradition upon which Iowa State was founded is all about access. Um, access to knowledge, access to education, access to opportunities, access to innovation, all in order to, uh, for, for us, for people to build a better life for themselves and their families and their communities. And Iowa State has always been and continues to be deeply committed to its land-grant mission. But I think that mission looks a little different in the 21st century than it did back in the 19th century when it was um, uh, initiated. Today, we recognize that access is just the first step. You know, we expect our leaders and our faculty, our staff, and our students to make a commitment to go beyond access to, as Diana mentioned, inclusion, and connection as part of the life of the university. You know, you can, might say access is easy, it's the connection and the, the um, inclusion that we really have to work um, tires tirelessly for. So over the years, the academic efforts of the U.S. Latino Studies Program have been strengthened through the creation of social, and I'd say advocacy networks, which on this campus include colegas, our Latino Faculty Staff Association, currently led by Santos Nunez and Monica Cordillo, who's here. Um, our Latino Graduate Student Association, which at times is very strong, at times less, less visible, but still um, an entity that continues to, to push. Our formal extension efforts uh, to Latino communities in Iowa, and I'm really proud of what Iowa State is doing, um, the, the staffing that it has and the programming it that it has to reach out. And of course, the role of Director of Latino Affairs held by Diana Sloan, which is part of the team in our Office of uh, Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion. And that's still a fairly young office, but one that's uh, important and doing very important work. So as an institution, we've accomplished a good deal in 25 years, but the work, uh, as we know, is not nearly done. So the breadth and depth of the panels and the speakers today, as I went through the program, I was really amazed. Lucia, I don't know how you pulled it off. Uh, 18 months, okay. Uh, so you've made this really a, really a connected, um, inclusive symposium, thank you. My one suggestion is let's not wait another 25 years before celebrating this again. Uh, we really should do something in maybe five years, maybe 10 years. I won't be here in 25 years and I'd really like to, to, be, to be there. So um, I think getting together again, seeing where we are, constantly reassessing and then charting a uh, path for the future is, is what would my recommendation would be. So muchísimas gracias a todos. Thank you very much.
Okay, so um, these are going to be six minutes, probably less, because I might be able to be as, as efficient. So um, I would like to conclude this amazing day of celebration. We can go to the next uh, slide. So I would like to conclude this amazing day of celebration, commitment, connection, and inclusion with some final thoughts. In times of crisis, love is a powerful and necessary operative word and action. I know that our colleague here, and he allowed me to share his story, so it's okay. Um, Dr. Brian Binken, uh, one day in my office, was saying to me, you know, um, sometimes our, our, our students don't come back, and they don't come back for a number of reasons. But he said to me, and at the time I was like, oh my God, because I, I don't do that, you know, but, but it's since then stayed with me, and I'm like, wow. He says, I tell my students that I love them, and it's because they're valuable, because they are worth the life that they have, and there's meaning to the life that they, that they lead. And he left, and I kept thinking, and I had tears in my eyes, I have to confess, and I was thinking, yeah, and he said this shortly after one of our high school students here at Ames High School committed suicide or completed suicide. And um, I think that part of inclusion work is value work. How do we value everyone around us? How do we each find meaning in our lives? And um, I would like to take one minute of silence or maybe 30 seconds to remember all of those people who haven't come back for whatever reasons and have love in our hearts for them and at the same time also know that we have love in our hearts for each other in here and outside of this space, that love is an operative word and it's an action word and it's a positive and constructive word and it's part of the base of thinking about inclusion and the work that we do. So I'm gonna look at 30 seconds, please, thank you. So the questions that I wanted to follow is how do we love ourselves and self-preserve within a humanitarian frame? How can we listen and take action in a constructive and solidarity, solidarity manner? How do we engage empathy to be part of this world without anger or reaction? This summer I was thinking about these issues also because of the book that I'm now writing on memoirs and the concept of belonging. And I would like to share, we can move on to the next, uh, Three short quotes. One is uh, from Bell Hooks. I have many, many favorite authors, and some of them, or at least one of them, was quoted today. Sherry Moraga, thank you. Um, uh, Bell Hooks says that the classroom, with all its limitations, and we've talked about limitations today, and, and we've talked a lot about a lot of things, right? The classroom, with all its limitations, remains a location of possibility. In that field of possibility, we have the opportunity to labor for freedom, to bet demand of ourselves and our comrades an openness of mind and heart that allows us to face reality, even as we collectively imagine ways to move beyond boundaries, to transgress. This is education as the practice of freedom. Next. Um, next. I also wanted to quote Chedi Moraga, who just wrote, an incredibly powerful memoir that I'm teaching my semester this semester and that I'm writing on and that I recommend highly. And in one of her, uh, many of her quotes, but one that I chose for tonight, she says, spirituality which inspires activism and similarly politics which move the spirit, which draw from the deep-seated place of our greatest longings for freedom, give, meanings to, uh, give meaning to our lives. And last quote. And this goes back to what I said, what I'm feeling that it's a, a good way to end and to close and to walk out of here thinking. Um, when we choose to love, we choose to move against fear, against alienation and separation. The choice to love is a choice to connect, 
to find ourselves in the other. End quote. I would like to conclude, I would like to thank all of our speakers, artists, students, staff, and faculty that have gathered here today, throughout the day, who are still here, and who have been here, and who will be joining us because I think that our celebration might be appealing to others. Um, I, I want to thank you all in the celebration of the existence of Latino Latina Studies as an official program on this campus. A quarter century and going strong, and it's only happening because you are all here. So thank you very, very much. <laughs>